So speaking of uh, insurmountable and shouldn't do it, last week we had um, a certain uh, CEO named Elon Musk putting <laughs> putting some uh, some chips into pig brains and hopefully soon uh, humans. I know we, we did talk about it. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> well, they got to fix that. Make sure that works. I mean, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to volunteer. <laughs> so Joe, do you want to do you want to? T- tell us what happened last week with well i got the video pulled up here i'm sure it'll get us demonetized but you know <laughs> um well who who yeah, made I mean, it that'll be the <laughs> well for anybody who saw it uh yeah they, they they got out some pigs what was the name of the pig that Sorry, wasn't cooperating Neuralink. Gertrude. i don't know if we said neural gertrude yeah oh gertrude um so okay so they had three different pigs there was the first one that had um it was a normal pig hadn't had anything done to it the second one was gertrude that they had trouble getting her to come out, but she has one in right now. Cyber uh, pig. And the th- cyber pig. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Pigs in cyber. Um, and the third one was one that had had one put in and had it taken out. So they were showing that it could be removed and not be, you know, something that kills you. Um, but can you hear the volume here? No. Mm, no. Yeah. yeah that's so, so I, I, I kind of missed this whole thing, uh, and, and I saw the best headline. Headline. It was like, Elon Musk wants to put probes in pigs' brains, and like that was the headline. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what you're seeing on screen right now is kind of interesting. They were tracking the joints, and so it was like predicting the the chip was predicting where the joints are going to be as it was walking, and it's and it's pretty close. I think the triangles are the are where the 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 neural link is expecting the joints to be. Um, I mean, and, and this is all very preliminary stuff. And, and so like if somebody was watching this thinking, oh, they're going to show somebody, you know, playing Tetris with their brain or something. Well, they're not there yet, you know, but um, but they're, they're showing some of the, the very basic stuff. But what, what they were doing here and you can't hear it, but they up on the screen right there. Can you see the screen in the background? Um, basically, they had a, the, the Neuralink so that when the snout when the pig's snout touched something, it would fire and make a, a noise. It would kind of go bloop, 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 as the pig's nose, nose That's touched a pretty good impression. So, Scott, they could put one in your brain so that whenever you touch your nose, it makes a sound and you can make music like that. That awesome <laughs> generative music, right? Yeah, I mean, the important thing was they were reading uh, like nerves in the snout firing, but they were reading it from the brain. So the nerves had you know crossed up and they were reading like the higher level impulses and then using machine learning to try and figure out how those corresponded to actual, you know, motor functions or whatever. Cause they were only putting little wires into the surface of the brain. They're not going very deep. They, they push oh, in really? like a thousand plus channels of thousand tiny little wires into the brain. Oh, I thought they were, I thought they were going pretty deep into it. I no, didn't realize they, they, they were... they, less than a millimeter or like a couple of millimeters. Really? And they have to put I... them in to avoid the blood vessels. So the, the robot right. specifically looks for the places where it can stick them. And it just kind of lays them out in a grid. And then they use machine learning to try and figure out what it all means. And I'm going to say what amazing. it all means isn't that we're going to be able to record dreams anytime soon and play them back <laughs> anytime soon. That is right. like straight off way out there pie in the sky. This, right? I mean, this isn't even at the current level of you know, cutting edge in labs, but the, st- the size and the integration factor in these things is definitely above anything we've seen in labs. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's kind of bringing the, it's bridging that gap between research labs and the potential to to do something potentially more mainstream uh, a little bit just because of the the cult of personality and the influence of, of Elon being such a yeah. uh, well-known person and be able to bring some some excitement and talent on board to help with this this process and something like this but the the big thing is you know the the implication of of eventually having uh your brain wired up to something that an ai can can translate basically what's going on in your brain and potentially replicate and clone um external stimuli and making your brain think that it's something happening especially you know if you're paraplegic or quadriplegic or something that's still to me the biggest future implications of Neuralink. and it was cool to see uh, that they've you know that it's working well with pigs which are a great analog for the human body um yeah i thought it was cool it i was a little bit i'm not gonna say i was underwhelmed because i i frankly don't didn't expect any kind of live well until he said there's gonna be a live thing a live demo but 
Um, you know, I think it's still really long ways away from any of the promises that he hopes that Elon hopes for. Very but you know, that's way. <laughs> but it's one of those things. It's like it is a foreseeable future. It is one of those things that you can absolutely foresee this in humanity's future in the next de- you know, decade or two decades where an implant like this is something that we're doing. So they're just making that, you know, they're taking steps to make that the reality. Have I wanted to have this screen up here because they did change the design of it a bit. Um, last year, they had this sort of thing where the 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 lines came down. You had this like behind the ear little thing. And what, what I think was interesting here was you could take this external, what do you want to call it, transmitter or whatever, and you would, you would charge that, and then that would charge the device on the inside. But I'm guessing with this one, you would just have to like slap something on the top of your yeah, head. Yeah, you wear the charging hat. I <laughs> well yeah I guess they would have to have some kind of like hat that you wear at night or something I was upset with that because I my watch half the time I will set it down on the stupid nightstand where it's not moving an inch all night and I'll get through half of my next day and I realize it didn't charge last night you gotta plug so it in so what happens when I'm tossing and turning you have to have the thing plugged in <laughs> but what happens if I'm tossing and turning there's no way with my flailing arms in the middle of the night that I'm not just gonna unplug my Neuralink connector Tim, you, you live alone in a big house. Come on. You can <laughs> in a king-size bed. I'm doing cartwheels, my friends, <laughs> in my sleep. I wonder about this. So one of the interesting things about um, the Tesla stuff was n- nothing really about the batteries or anything they did was was really, like, uh, new. You know, all the things already existed. They kind of packaged them up nicely and made a good product, finally. I wonder how much of this stuff is... Like are are other people in this space that are experts in it? Like, oh yeah, that's that's kind of normal. Or is this really something like, wow? This the is form factor is very different, right? I mean, they they showed yeah. you, right? They have they they've had the ability to do all these kind of brain probe electrode things. Yeah, that's the Utah array right, right there. Like that's what normally. Right, they're just sort of getting on. They're they're you know they're trying to put these in a form factor which is acceptable for everyday use. That's the real mm-hmm. thing. Right. Uh, of these things that Elon has talked about, I mean, and Elon obviously is, you know, 50 years ahead of where this stuff will actually be. But like, Scott, is there anything that actually excites you or you would consider like, yeah, I would do that. Like, it'd be worth I, it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I would. But I mean, yeah, sure. Like, this is this is fascinating because ideally, I would like to live forever or die trying. But I, the live forever <laughs> side is definitely... You know, uploading brains to computers would be certainly a nice outcome from this, but that is a long way away, right? That is very long way away. Yeah, but I think, but you this... know, you're only going to get there via incremental steps. And if somebody comes up with a way to talk to my phone or, or uh, control things via my brain, then, you know, maybe maybe if it gets to some level of capability, it'll be worth my time to just say, like... Let me tell you, you I wasn't a fan of the concept of the watch, but the Apple Watch just, like, saves me so much time. It's like, oh, I got a message, bang. Like, it saves me thousands of times a day from pulling my phone out and having it go straight into my brain. Sure, maybe it will give me more time. Well, I've always said, like, everybody that says they would never in a million years do it, I'm like, well, if everybody else had it and you were falling behind... Yeah, of course. Well, I just, just like be the if, first person to do it. I've always been a Luddite. <laughs> well, and just like if you were to talk, go back uh, 20 years ago and show someone your phone and say, that, guys, in 20 years, you'll be able to connect with anyone around the world at any time. You could, you know, do all this. They're tracking you at all times. They're listening probably. You know, like if you told them everything that's going on right now, they'd be like, no, no, no. I don't want any part of that. Like that sounds scary, but that's just our normal life now. And we've evolved into that with increased smartphones and increased you know, capabilities. And I think, yeah, it's just the same. It'll be an iterative thing where for now it can, you know, read our impulses and turn it into physical inputs on things. And eventually, yeah, why couldn't it begin to do more and more? I just hope that they have a team which is working very specifically in security because this is something where you really want it to be secure. (laughs) And, you know, some people that make smartphones, they have teams that work very specifically on security and other people don't have security teams on their smartphones. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I shared this with the guys just kind of in, uh, in text form earlier this week, but I thought it was, it's relevant to what we're talking about here. Th- this is a guy who has, um, Park- some Parkinson's. kind of palsy or oh, no, maybe yeah. Parkinson's, Parkinson's or something, Yeah. but he's got a deep brain stimulator 
So as you can see, you can barely eat cereal without it. And then you yeah, press the yeah. button on it. Problem solved. That's so crazy. Yeah, it, it's amazing that they're making you know, ste you know, steps forward in all these things, but no guarantee so it's going to awesome. solve every single problem. And, and honestly, the deep brain simulator is kind of a, it's not a subtle solution, but it's, it's good that right. it works for it's a certain deep brain for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very archaic, like it feels to me like there's so many things that we still do medically that I'm just like, we're going to be laughing about that in, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Like, wait, 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 wait. You guys used to just split open your sternum, rip your rib cage apart and just do things, you know, like just shuffle things around and, you know, like, it, yeah, like I think we'll be laughing about some of the medical procedures we have these days when there's lasers that just go boop, boop, spop, pop, and next thing you know, you have a new valve or something, you know? It's, yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot of heart surgery that's done now via stuff that winds its way up the blood vessels, the arteries yeah. in your leg. The femoral like, they artery. They reconstruct heart valves it, using that. To, to that whole thing, like the whole concept of evidence based science is a very, or, or I'm sorry, evidence based medicine is a very new idea. You know, in the 50s and 40s, you know, doctors are smoking in delivery rooms <laughs> when babies are being born because they don't believe that that's bad at all. And like germs weren't even believed to be a thing, you know, 100 years ago. It's like just a it's insane. So some of the just like therapeutic radioactives, right? It just, just like Radio changes in radium thinking. water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, Joey, you're have you done a video? Class? Have you done a video about like some of those? I love those old like snake oil things, you know, like, yeah, like radioactive water and stuff. Have you ever done a video on that? Crazy stuff, yeah. yeah One of my like, favorite. We found this source of energy. It's got to be good for you. <laughs> Drink uranium. Well, what was the, uh, there was a meme about it. It said, at least in the last pandemic, they had cocaine in their soda. You know? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody. There is a good um, segue here because uh, one of the purpose or one of the use cases for this is, yeah, no, is to make yourself pat on the back there uh, <laughs> is that um, implanted devices in your body have to be powered by something. So why not put nuclear waste in there? <laughs> that sounds like a brilliant idea. I love it. NDB. Yeah, I've had a million people reach out to me about this and I don't know exactly what to make of it. I'm curious what Scott has to say, but um, yeah, there's there's some companies, there's a couple of them. So this one's called NDB and there's another one called Arclight, I believe is what this one was talking about. I saw a movie there before, it was great. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing they, they make diamonds with carbon-14 in them, and the carbon-14 decay uh, drives some sort of energy that is pulled off by a, some thing. Exactly. So, so they were talking about that this has been done before, um, where basically they take the radioactive material in the middle and they coat it or, or surround it by basically like solar panels is basically what it is. Photo, photo it's like photons. Yeah. It's beta decay that's, beta, beta. that's setting off and, and causing electricity. So what these guys did was they took graphene, graphene or graphite? Graphite, graphite probably, because they were making diamonds. Yeah, exactly. So they took the carbon-14 from the graphite from the nuclear reactors, the spent fuel rods and stuff, and they uh, you know, stripped out the carbon-14, made diamonds out of it. And what the diamonds do, if I read this correctly, is it both... <laughs> releases the, the the beta decay and absorbs it like the solar panel structure would so it just like mm. creates electricity and you don't charge it it just it just keeps making electricity for like thousands of years yeah i mean what? this is not uh, like so the half-life of carbon 14 is thousands of years which is why it's used in radiocarbon dating right but there have been medical batteries for a long time that use radioisotopes there have been little miniature radio 
uh, thermal generators what? using plutonium that people used for pacemakers in the past. No way. Yeah. So I yeah, people had that. radioactive stuff implanted in them in the fifties. You know. Whoa. Well, of course, the 50s. I don't know. Fifties or the sixties. <laughs> when you know, when re- I'd say the fifties because I'm thinking Fallout, but uh, I think it's probably more <laughs> likely the sixties and seventies. But yeah, That's the idea that crazy. you know you could have a little nuclear powered part of you definitely. Uh, had some validity when you wanted a device that would last a lifetime. Wow. Well, and it's it's true. The the mid century stuff, everything was nuclear. You know, wait, I, I nuclear. Mean, nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. Like, uh, you know, we're gonna have nuclear cars. Drink. We're going to have everything was just gonna be nuclear, and uh, that wasn't the reality, obviously. And it's funny to see this saying right here, like NDB says it'll conform to any shape or standard, including double A, triple A, you know, 2170. So you could, you know, have these batteries. It's kind that of could... a dumb idea though. Like if you can make it much smaller and generate, like, why would you just conform to these other sizes? I don't hmm. understand why you would do that. Maybe better output or, you know, yeah, I guess more. you could, you could retrofit things, right? Yeah. That's something that currently takes a whatever battery. You could just pop this in and say, right. That'd be pretty hot. Yeah, that's that's crazy. But yeah, speaking I mean, of hot. <laughs> no, go ahead, Scott. No, I'm just saying, like, the idea, yeah, this is a this is why, you know, we use radioisotope power sources in spacecraft because they last for years. And it's the only mm-hmm. way to get a battery that will last for, for years is to have a nuclear power source. Chemical power yeah, sources how, can't cut it. That's how uh Mark Watney survived. Right, out on, uh, yeah, that's Mars, how he, he found his hot stuff on in Mars. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you, and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com/yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.